In the CBI, mountains and jungles aren't the only obstacles. There are also rivers to be crossed. Some are narrow, shallow, and swift, but not particularly hazardous to experienced troops. By holding onto a rope stretched across the river, men are able to wade through the swift water without losing their footing. Animals are led across, and the few trucks that manage to get through the practically impassable roads ford these rivers. Rather than carry a lot of bulky supplies across, they are usually loaded on floats and towed over by manpower. The wider and deeper rivers are often crossed by swimming. These troops are driving the Japs back so that roads can be built, and until the roads are completed, it is almost impossible to get assault boats and bridging equipment into a place like this. Bamboo poles lashed together make a simple raft which several men can use to float their equipment across. For the heavier equipment, such as pack howitzers, a wooden frame covered with canvas is usually rigged up, which works pretty well. A type of bamboo raft used over here in the CBI is this long, narrow job. Horses and mules are taken over by holding them alongside. Here's an odd wrinkle in power. In this deep water, instead of using paddles, the natives use crude, hoe-like affairs made out of bamboo. They literally hoe their way over to the other side. Because of the current, they naturally drift downstream quite a ways, but they get to the opposite bank. This is an old trick, using a tarp to float a weapons carrier or a jeep across. It really works, and in water too deep to ford, when you don't have bridge equipment or rafts, it's a good thing to know about this method. Just drive the vehicle onto the tarp, laid out on a soft bottom in shallow water. Then wrap the tarp around the vehicle so it won't leak, push it into deeper water, and you're all set to float it to the other side. In any kind of current, however, you'd better hook it onto a cable so it won't end up several miles downstream. You've heard of monsoons. Well, they can cause plenty of trouble. The trucks couldn't be driven out of this quickly flooded motor park, so an improvised raft was hurriedly made from empty oil drums and poles. The usual type of power out here, manpower, was used to pull the rafts over to higher ground, where the trucks could be unloaded and driven away. Again, a wide river to cross with no access road to bring up equipment. Most of these pneumatic boats and floats were dropped from air transports. There wasn't an air compressor around, but they did manage to dig up a substitute. After a lot of footwork, these bellows pumped enough air into the boats so that they could be used to ferry troops and equipment across. In some ways, the rivers came in handy. In many cases, these streams were the only means of getting men and supplies from one road to another. Two assault boats fastened together and powered with outboard motors proved invaluable for ferrying. This is where training pays off. If you've learned how to operate and maintain an outboard, you'll be able to teach others and avoid having deadlined equipment. For heavier supplies, like Bailey bridge panels, two assault boat pontons are fastened together with bark. An A-frame on the front of a truck is a handy gadget, if you have it around, to handle heavy equipment. 
During the run up and down the river, you'll have to keep a sharp lookout for debris and japs. At the upstream site, they weren't lucky enough to have a crane. That called for manhandling of the Bailey panels, which is a job. Two ponton rafts are being used to ferry vehicles and other equipment. Here's a raft constructed of 10-ton ponton equipment. The raft must have a solid deck and railings to ferry horses and mules. And here's another animal raft made up of assault boats and plywood treadways, which are standard infantry support raft equipment. Three outboard motors are being used to buck this current, and it's lucky they had three, because even though two of them conked out, they still had enough power to make headway. A lot of horses and mules are used over here where only trails are available. But as soon as the roads get built to the rivers, heavy equipment and bridging equipment are brought in. These dozers are making a good-sized cut for an approach road to what will be a pneumatic ponton bridge. It's usually easier to prepare an abutment with a dozer than it is to use trestles at the ends of the bridge. The pneumatic floats were inflated up on the bank and are being carried down to the water's edge. To make the loads lighter, some of the center tubes were left out and are inserted here. If you don't always get all the equipment you're supposed to have, you scheme and improvise until you manage some way. Here, a dozer has been loaded on a raft and is ferried to the far shore so it can work on that abutment. Notice how the two assault boat pontons with outboards are attached to the pneumatic raft, and with one motor conked out, the other one is able to control the raft, even though it is located at one corner. If you enjoyed that, you may enjoy some of my other World War II videos. I have three World War II playlists, one of general videos, one with newsreel footage, and another concentrating on the efforts of women during World War II. Check out my channel for other interesting videos on a variety of topics, and subscribe because we'll be adding lots of new video, including new World War II footage.